show and prove. Don't got to do a bunch of bickering back and forth. Just say, where's your proof? You got a bunch of speculation. Which proof? You don't have none. So end of argument, end of discussion. And I have been invited to so many different kinds of debates. You know, I get so many invitations to be on like uh, internet radio shows. I turn down a lot of stuff. You know, I get offers from a lot of people who want me to be involved in a lot of things that they do. And, you know, I stay away from anything that has to do with any kind of, you know, t- you know, major type of publicity or, you know, that's too huge because it's not me. Like I said, this is I'm just a, a dude trying to put out information. And that's all I am. I'm not trying to be on this higher level. So I, once people start getting into that world of being on radio stations and, and speaking and doing all these engagements and arrangements and all that and taking when money gets involved. You know, corruption comes in. It sets in. Not saying that that will happen to me, but I don't want to be in a situation where I got to turn somebody down because they want me to do something that, you know, I feel uncomfortable with. And then now because I turned them down, you know, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be an issue. And, you know, you get people try to slander your name. You see what happened to Umar, you know, the whole stripper thing. You know, stuff like that happens when you start coming in the public eye more. People look to you as, you know, like you're running for president. I have people who actually say, you know, the, uh, you have something against gay people because you said fucking faggot and this and that. I say, yo, you know, I'm a, I'm from the hood. Listen, I'm talking. I'm not trying to run for president. I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm just talking. I'm here. I'm me. So if I say something that is not polit- politically correct, then fucking excuse me. I'm a regular fucking person. I'm not here trying to be, you know, whoever you think I'm trying to be. I, I don't care about all that stuff. You know, like I said, cool as far as money. So you can't go and just try to buy me out and try to get me in one of these situations where I'm not really going to get heard or my message is going to get misconstrued. So, you know, I'd rather just stay to myself. Now, eventually I will have some people on certain videos come through and and talk with me. That's something I actually got coming up for a later video uh, when I'm talking with a few people. But, you know, I'm not shunning these people. Who do the debates or anything like that. That's I love that stuff, man. I love it. It's good information. People need to see it. But as long as these people stay true and they don't go south and start trying to get too, you know, high and try to make a big deal out of this instead of just putting the information out, then I got no problem with these people. But you know, for me, it's not for me. So from a common sense standpoint, you know, as I said, religion can be done away. But, you know, you get people who claim they're not brainwashed, nothing wrong with them. They just love their God. They love their religion. But they won't take common sense. They won't take, you know, what's final. You see something that's final. The argument is done over. They can't accept that. They want to continue to argue. So, as I said, there's really no debate. But we're going to get into, you know, which, which is basically, and I think you'll agree with me after I do this little presentation, which is basically the killer for all religions. If you kill Judaism, you kill Judaism, you basically kill Christianity, Islam as well. It's, it's a done deal. So if you've seen my video, you know, game over, you know, the Israelite doctrine, Old Testament destroy. I mean, to me, that's, that's game. And I get people who don't watch that video and, you know, they ask questions that I answer in the video because they didn't watch it. And they ask me questions, but in all reality, that video right there, if you've seen it, it's, it's, I mean, it's game over. So basically the bottom line for all three religions, major religions, you have to look at the facts. For the Hebrews, if you believe that the Bible was written by black men, where is your proof? There is no proof that says that. Only to the contrary, when you find proof. That's what it's saying. To the contrary, not black, but exclusively Greek. As I said, when you go back, your Bible basically starts out with the Septuagint Greek. LXX, Letters of Orestius, is talking about, you know, the fake Pharaoh, the white Pharaoh, you know, uh, Ptolemy II of Philadelphia, who basically commissioned uh, the, he says, Jews to come And do a translation of the Hebrew law into Greek. This is where we get our Old Testament. Where you get your Torah, where you get your uh, Tanakh, where you get your Old Testament. All supposed to come from this. So what the history is saying is that the whole foundation 
where your Old Testament begins comes from Greek people. Plain and simple. Now, we know the copies that we get, the earliest copies we start to see is in, you know, we start to see Aramaic copies and, and Hebrew eventually. But we know that it starts with the Septuagint, which is Greek. And that's where it came from, the Greek people. Is there any proof that Jews came? Jews came to Alexandria, Egypt, and did a translation of the Hebrew law into Greek. Is there any proof of that? No, there's no proof. There's no proof that these people orally uh, did a translation and just wrote it down and they knew what they were talking about. We can't prove that. So all of a sudden, just poof, out of nowhere, we got the Septuagint Greek created or given to us by white Greeks. Plain and simple. So this is where it starts from. This is what the facts show us. Do we have any proof that a black man had anything to do with that book besides, you know, what they stole from Kemet, of course? No, there's no proof. It's no proof. The proof only shows us the Ptolemies, the Greeks, and, you know, supposed accounts. The letters of Aristius is most scholars all, are all in agreement that the letter is bogus and it was written sometime, you know, in the uh, first century. It's bogus. But still, a letter is not proof. No matter that it's a letter that's speaking about it, it's not proof. But another another dagger to the whole thing is when you read the letters, as I pointed out in the video, it's talking about, you know, freeing the Jews and paying all his money to free them, only to subject them to Hellenization. And you got to ask yourself, why would you do all that, free the Jews, just to allow them to have their religion of Judaism if he was going to subject them to Hellenization. It doesn't make sense. So the letters are the letters are bogus. So I went into this whole thing, but there's no proof black men had anything to do with the book besides what they stole from Kemet and, and plagiarized and put into their books. So just that alone destroys Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And we can keep going from there and see that um it's no proof. Without proof, you don't have a debate. So now, like I said, I know people are busy. We got things to do. We got life to deal with. Everybody don't have time to go and do this research. But there's so much out there that you can see that proves where your Bible came from, where your religion started. And you need to take a look at these things to understand, you know, what has taken place and what is real and what is wrong. You know, take a look. The Christians took the whole Christian Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, out of the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So that if you want to go to the source, don't go to King James. Go to ancient Egypt and you've got a Bible that's 10,000 years older than anything that these Christians have. You have students going through college, graduating with a degree, and then they can't even write their own name. I began to study the history of Africa, particularly the history of Ethiopia and Egypt. You go back and study the, the ancient history of Egypt, and especially the religion of ancient Egypt, and they had a Bible. I have a good English translation of it in three volumes, three volumes in one, called the Theban Recension of the Book of the Dead. And in this, you take this Egyptian Bible and compare it with the King James Bible, which is popular among the Protestant denomination in the United States. And you study the Egyptian Bible and you study the Christian Bible, the Egyptian Bible goes back 10,000 years. The King James Bible only goes back about 300 years. And then you study these two books and compare them, and you, found that, you find out that the Christians took the whole Christian Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, out of the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So that if you want to go to the source, don't go to King James. I chose to be a teacher of African history. I chose to look in the Bible where I couldn't find my people. I started looking for them in the world, and I didn't stop until I found them. And I know why they were left out of the Bible. I know why all the angels are white. You mean to tell me God is merciful, God is kind, and not one little brown or black angel sneaked into hell? I ain't buying that. Now the Bible that you get so dewy-eyed over is one of the greatest 
pieces of propaganda ever written. If you want to read the Bible, why don't you read the Bible one day and read Mein Kampf the next day and see the comparison? That's hard on your mind. Because you think if you don't have Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, you don't have that spirituality. I've got more spirituality after I put all of them down. And I've got more religion after I put all of them down. If you look at indigenous African religion belief systems, if you look at the idea when Africans had no churches of any consequence because these fools came here and said, this is the house of God, and the African looked at that church and said, if God who made the wind, the spring, made the ocean roar, and you're going to tell me he can fit into a little thing you call a church? <laughs> that is no house of God. So some of you had the common sense enough to, buy, to move away from it, and some had the common sense to burn it down. I'm saying that you are closer to God when the further way you get away from organized religions that are all handmaidens of conquest. The Roman Empire <laughs> developed during the early page of Christianity. Remember, the Roman Empire started in Africa. It rose in Africa, it fell in Africa. A lot of people need to stop reading some religious books and read some straight history without fact, fable, without supposition, without myth. Read straight history. Read the Mediterranean world in ancient times. She's a racist, she's bigger, but her chronology is good. And there's a good history of the Europeans trying to move out of Europe into the Mediterranean to find something to eat to put on that gosh darn awful European food. <laughs> he has solved his problems at the expense of other people. The slave trade liberated Europe. Once you lose track of your heritage, you lose track of your liberty in this world. The Europeans doing the slave trade not only read the African out of history, they colonized history, they colonized information about history, they colonized image, they colonized the image of God. That the first white Jesus was not painted until 16, 1509 by Michelangelo for Pope Julius II. So that if you think for one moment and your stained glass windows that that white man with the blue eyes and the blonde hair has anything at all to do with Jesus, then I say if you still in fact, in, in spite of knowing it, continue and will next Sunday go and look at the same thing, then I know something is wrong. It is because we, our minds have been suppressed by most of those who control us on Sunday afternoons and other such times in the name of the Lord. And they themselves haven't been controlled because in the centers of theology it is the white Christian, the white, and I hate to use the word Christian with respect to white quote-unquote brothers if there are such things. My brother doesn't mistreat me. But let us first start, as I said from the beginning, where did the story of Jesus start? It started 4,100 years before Jesus. It started with the story of Isis and who became pregnant by an immaculate conception, gave birth to her son Horus by a virgin birth. Horus, who at the age of 12, removed himself from his population and went further south into Egypt at the Grand Lodge of Luxor. At the age of 30 he returned and at the age of 33 he was murdered, cut up into four, uh, 14 pieces and so on and so on. If you look in what is called the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Papyrus of Annie, you will see the same story. If you go to Egypt today, and by the way, Egypt is in Africa the last time I looked at it on June and January the 9th. <laughs> Unless it took a 747 and flew away. 
But if you should go to Egypt at a place called Abydos, there is a temple there, still there, partially in ruins. The temple of the Pharaoh Seti One, S E T I One. And there you will see, not only in the hieroglyphic writing that the ancient Africans wrote, but you will also see the picture form the Africans painted that drew the entire story of the Immaculate Conception and the Virgin Birth story.